Welcome back to Taiwan In Focus. New southbound policy is something of a buzzword these days. It can mean massive opportunities and at the same time, challenges for the government and businesses alike. So what is new southbound policy really? What are its measures or is it an empty promise? Let's find out today. This policy concern is targeted to countries in ASEAN and some countries in South Asia. For instance, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, and Vietnam. When it comes to new southbound policy, everyone thinks of South Asia and Asia. However, I think the importance of Australia and New Zealand cannot be ignored too. New southbound policy is the policy platform that President Tsai Ing-wen proposed while she was running for presidency back in September 2015. In short, it focuses on strengthening relations between Taiwan and 18 countries in South Asia and Southeast Asia in the following four respects, economic collaborations, talent exchange, sharing resources, and forging regional links. In other words, it's more than trade and investment or finding cheap labor in the region. The new southbound policy also includes people-to-people, -people, cultural, educational, research, and other types of exchanges. One of the priorities for the government is tourism. Starting August 2016, citizens of Thailand and Brunei can visit Taiwan without a visa. In addition, visa rules for individuals from ASEAN member states such as Cambodia, Myanmar, the Philippines, and Vietnam were also relaxed. The government hopes the new initiative will boost the number of visitors from Southeast Asia by 20%, contributing an extra 13 billion NT dollars into the domestic economy. Other important measures include allowing residence extensions for eligible foreign professionals and technical workers in Taiwan. Besides, as Zhang Den, the minister without portfolio, points out, providing university admission to students speaking Southeast Asian languages is also a priority for the government now. Of this new policy is that uh, through uh, the expansion of our education program to provide uh, more scholarship uh, to Southeast Asia, uh, young people, students, and give them uh, good education, uh, bring them to Taiwan. Like tourism, a more immediate beneficiary will be the education sector. A significant share of the overall budget and subsidy is likely to be allocated to ASEAN and Indian students for scholarships in Taiwan. The easing of post-graduation work visa regulations for students from the region will also help to attract and retain young talents and skilled graduates. Indeed, there are a number of changes that are already in the works, but much more remains to be done. Furthermore, some observers believe that when engaging in this region to develop the mindset of respecting local culture, language, and knowledge is a must for Taiwanese officials and business leaders as well. Charles Zhou, Deputy Executive Director of Chinese Taipei Apex Study Center, points out that it's of utmost importance to deepen our understandings of these countries. There is only one disadvantage point I can talk about here. I would like to mention uh, our limited knowledge about these uh, countries and our questionable mindset when we interact with them. Uh, first of all, about uh, our limited knowledge, uh, I think we have to admit that we have invested not much in understanding these countries. I remember that uh, several years ago, um, three years ago, when I visited Indonesia and uh, talked to a uh, local researcher, and he asked me a question, how much um, does Taiwan spend for uh, East Asian studies every year? And, What's the gap between this amount and the, uh, one, and the the one you invest in U.S. studies? I feel very embarrassed to answer this question because I know that the gap is huge. The other thing is that I would like to say about the questionable mindset uh, when we are uh, con uh, interacting with these countries. I mean that uh, to a certain extent, we are seeing this country in the view of centralism. And this centralism uh, has um, uh, two facets. First of all, we are always seeing these countries in the viewpoint of the West. So um, 
you know, it could be very uh, misleading. It makes us uh, European centralism um, in, in certain extent and make it hard for us to see eye to eye to local people. That's the first facet. And the second one is that, you know, due to our economic success during the uh, past decades, uh, we tend to think that um, these countries are uh, uh, economically uh, lagging behind compared with us. So we might want to uh, teach them or educate them how to do business or how to connect with uh, the world uh, rather than um, learning from local knowledge or communicating uh, in uh, local language. As Dr. Zhou has pointed out, it's very important to learn from local knowledge. So it remains to be seen how the government can form regional trade and investment partnership with ASEAN and South Asian countries, because such partnerships are complicated matters involving regional politics and economics. The 2014 riots in Vietnam targeting Chinese and Taiwanese firms serve as a vivid reminder to the government of potential risks and the importance of protecting its overseas nationals and investments. It would be very irresponsible for any government to urge businesses to invest in another country, only for them to realize later that they're on their own without any government support. The government has promised to set up separate platforms for each of the 18 countries to help businesses and investors with their questions regarding those countries. The government said it will also provide financial assistance and regular risk assessment to Taiwanese companies looking to invest in the target countries. We can uh, develop uh, many agricultural cooperation projects so that we can help the uh, local small farmers to raise their income. Uh, we can also engage in a uh, uh, joint uh, technical research project so that we can have uh, the manufacturers, uh, the companies making better products. So those are all the merits. In terms of resource sharing, many local governments have sister city relationships with Southeast Asian cities, but lack the motivation for further interactions. Now the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has decided to consolidate the nation's diplomatic resources, adding that it would reallocate any freed up resources to Southeast Asian nations, such as education, research, agriculture, and so on. As you can see so far, the objective of the new southbound policy is to reduce Taiwan's reliance on mainland China. The idea behind this is simple. Don't put all your eggs in just one basket. As Taiwan's second largest export market with a total population of over 2 billion, ASEAN and South Asian region as a whole are a reasonable choice for any Taiwanese enterprises to consider establishing or increasing a presence in the region. However, given its limited budget, the policy is more likely to have an impact on the median and long-term goal of cultivating Taiwan-friendly talent in ASEAN and vice versa.